Okay, so you guys can see what we're gonna make. And yeah, let's just jump straight into Blender and use the default cube that we have. So scale this up by 5 around the z-axis. Now we want to delete the top and bottom face. And create some extra edge loops in here. So Ctrl R and then I want to create some extra edge loops. You get this little tab down here and you can change this number of cuts to 50. Awesome. Now we want to add a modifier and it's going to be the simple deform. We want to deform it around the Z axis and then change this angle. You can do 360 degrees. Um, I personally like to do 450 and you can always go higher or lower in this angle amount. Just make sure you do it in increments of 90 degrees. So if I want to go higher, you do plus 90. And if you want to go lower, you, you just do minus 90, right? So let's go and create a curve circle. We're going to scale this also five times. And then we're going to select this main cube again and then use our curve modifier. We're going to select this curve and then use the Z axis. So you can see that it now follows the curve. If you go here into your object properties, you can change this. You can change the scale. So we can do the scale of the Z axis. We can uh, put uh, close to each other. And I would personally just put them so they are almost touching each other. Like somewhere like here. Awesome. Now um, I kind of want to rotate this. So I'm going to select both the curve and the cube and rotate this around the x-axis for 90 degrees. So now if you click on one, so now if you click on one, we are in our front view. Very cool. So uh, yeah, we want to animate it, right? And if you want to animate it, it's literally just put the rotation of the y-axis and that is how we get that cool effect. What I personally did, and you have the option to do that or not, I edited this cube so i just hit all of these modifiers and i created some extra edge loops and then i played around with these edge loops so uh, let's say this one i scaled inwards just make sure you then do not do it around the y-axis because you still want to make it nice and straight and then i selected all of these edges ctrl b and created a small bevel then i did alt s to kind of scale this bevel up. And one thing that you want to do is you want to make sure you have some more uh, vertices in here. Because we are going to spawn our like balls on top of every vertice. So uh, make sure you keep that into mind. And well, if you have something that you like, make sure you put your symbol on, of course, so you can see what is actually happening. I would also do a subdivision surface and I will just put the subdivision surface a little bit up. So yeah, this is kind of the form that we're having right now. Um, I might want to scale this a little bit up. So you can literally play around a lot with this. Okay, so that is the shape that we have right now. Very cool. And what we want to do with this is we want to create all of these wooden balls on top. So if we just create a new mesh and it's going to be a UV sphere. We can select this UV sphere and create some materials for it. So if you go here into your shading, we can literally just uh, put a new shader, image texture. So just open it and this is going to be the wood rough color. Let's look a little bit closer. This color goes into the specular. Open it. It's going to be the wood rough specular. I also put it inside the roughness and then just with a color ramp, change these colors a little bit. So the amount of roughness that we have. And as last, I just created a, a normal map here make sure this is a non-color data and a normal map node we need in between here 
color goes into color normal normal and I put this to 2.3 something like that make sure you make uh, give this a shade smooth and when you're happy with this then we can go on into just our modeling again and we're gonna create a particle system so go here into your particle system click on plus and we're going to do hair now instead of hair I want to render an object which is gonna be our sphere and what I like to do always is to just put the scale to one so everything is the same size as my um, sphere so now it's way too big so select your sphere then just scale it down you can see that it's not really the same size and that is because the hair length also has to do with it so you can put that to one as well okay so now if you scale this up and down you can see it's the same size awesome uh, you can see that this doesn't really look like it's following any geometry. So how do we fix that? Go to source. We're going to emit from vertices. So verts. And then do not do it at a random order. So right now it already looks better. But it still looks a bit weird. Why is that? Well, this is because the number does not fit the number of uh, vertices that we have inside this model. If we go in this model. Select everything. We can see here the amount of vertices. So 1300. If we put this here, 1, 3, 0, 0, we have a very nice amount of vertices. So that is cool. We can scale this a bit up so it fits a bit better. And we can only see something in here which are duplicates. And um, you can get some rendering mistakes from that. And you can't really see it now. Yeah, here you can see it. You can see that this just doesn't look right. That is a problem. And you can fix it quite easily. We just select or this front or the back here. Make sure you select the whole edge loop. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go in here into our object data properties. We're going to create a new vertex groups and assign this group to it. So yeah, this is just a group. I'm not going to rename it, but um, yeah. Now we can go back into our particle system. And we can click on the vertex groups, as you can see here, density, and use that group. So you can see that it now only uses this, and we just want to uh, invert that. So if you click on these arrows here, it gets inverted, and now we do not have any duplicates in the middle. Because it just denies those um, yeah, vertices. So now, if we look a little bit at our material, you can see that we have zero rotation in here. Like there's almost no randomness and I like randomness a lot. So if we go here, we have to put it to advanced and now we have an extra option, which is rotation. Make sure you select this and play around with this randomized face and randomized face. So now we have some randomness in here, which I really like. And yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, last thing that I want to deny the render to see is actually the emitter. So if you go into render, you have show emitter and you can turn that off. Awesome. So now I put my camera. I want it just in front. So what I like to do is just go to view, lock camera to view, and then move it a little bit where it should be. So around here will be okay. Now turn this off again. So we can zoom in a bit. Go to item. Make sure you select the camera. And here you can see all the values. So I just put the X at 0, Z at 0, then the rotation at 90, then 0 and 0. So now it's straight up front and you can of course change the Y axis a little bit so it fits inside. Awesome. So that's kind of how I put it in the middle. And now we want to animate this of course. So how do we do that? Well, I just grab this, go to timeline. By the way, we can see now even also some duplicates. Why is that? Remember, we turned this off. So now the count is not good anymore. Remember the count, the number. So if we actually look at these vertices, which are uh, 24, if we, so if you just lower this number by the amount that you have, then we should not have that problem anymore. Okay, that seems to be fixed. Let's go back to animating. So you select this, go into your object properties, and then if you rotate this Y axis, you can see what it does. And that is exactly what we wanted to do, right? So we're gonna insert the keyframe, 
just when it's zero and then at like frame 120 we are going to put this to let's do 360 and then insert keyframe so now it loops perfectly the one problem is um let's put this to 120 this end you can see that it will slow down but we actually have another big problem here that you can see that the scale up very big and that is just uh, if you select this model here and then click a ctrl a and apply the scale this will not happen but our next problem is if we play this you can see that it starts quite slowly then it uh, picks up speed and then at the end it's like slows off again and because of this it uh, looks like it doesn't really loop so how do we fix that i just like to grab another tab in here select our graph editor and if you graph editor you can see what the animation does it, you can see that it's not really linear it uses a little bit of a curve so if we select everything with a then go to key interpolation mode and instead of a bezier we're gonna do linear so now it's just a linear line you can see that the, the line also changed and it will be uh, perfectly looping okay awesome so um, yeah, now you just have to render it. What I personally did, I like to render all the stuff. You can do it in Eevee. I personally like cycles way more. It just looks more realistic. So I go to cycles, put it to GPU. Um, and let's put the performance. Because I use GPU, I, used, I make these styles bigger. So 256 by 256. If you use CPU, then don't you do it way bigger. That's not needed. Um, now I also like to add a background because we do not have it. So what I like to do here is go into the shader editor, make sure I go to world instead of object, add an environment texture in here, color goes into the color, and we're gonna open the HRI. So um, yeah, just select one. I guess I will just select this one here, Kali interior, and then look at your render. Looks quite cool. And you can, of course, uh, move this around the way you want it. So if you want to use a texture coordinate in here and a mapping node. Generate it goes into the vector and then this vector goes into this vector. You can essentially rotate this around. So if I rotate uh, the Z axis for 90 degrees, you can see that now we have a different kind of lighting going on. Um, yeah, you can play around with the strength and this is all up to you how you're gonna do it. I would love to see your renders by the way. I personally just also make this transparent and then put a background uh, later on inside. Um, also, this one I just put to the side so I just can't see it. And if you want to render it, make sure you put an output map in here, an output folder in here. So I like to just make a folder inside the same folder that you have this save file, uh, wood looping animation, and then just animation loop, accept it. And now when you render your animation, it all goes into that folder. So that's just the way I like to do it. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys learned from this and I'll see you guys in the next one.